Is there anything more cooling and refreshing than a nice glass of lemonade? It's probably why August 20th, one of the hotter days here in Los Angeles at least, is National Lemonade Day. And to honor it, I'll be making a 17th century French recipe for lemonade. This time on Drinking History. So lemonade has lots of different variations, and it's a really good way to tell someone's palate uh, based on how they make it, how much sugar they put in versus, you know, how, how tart or sour they like it. I tend to make mine really sweet because I don't really like sour things all that much, but, you know, to each their own. But today we'll be checking out the palate of La Varenne, one of the most famous French chefs, as we make his recipe for lemonade from the 1651 publication Le Cuisine Francois. Take one pint of water, add to it a half pound of sugar, the juice of six lemons and two oranges, the zest of one half lemon and half an orange you have pressed. Mix the water well in two very clean vessels, pouring it back and forth from one to the other several times, and strain through a white napkin. Now honestly, since lemons, oranges, and sugar are all quite different than they were 400 years ago, this is going to be more of an approximation of what La Varenne would have tasted, but I've never really let that stop me before, so let's just go ahead and make it. What you'll need is one quart or one liter of water. Now I know the recipe says a pint, but at this time a French pint was actually about two modern American pints. So that's why we're using it and we can kind of test that theory because in a 1653 translation into English, they translate it as a quart. Also at the time there were only 12 ounces instead of 16 in a pound, so a half of a pound of sugar would be about six ounces, but a pound was actually quite variable depending on where you were in France, so it's really anyone's guess, but I am going with one cup or 200 grams of sugar, then six lemons and two oranges. Now you want to find the smallest lemons and oranges that you can. At the time, they varied in size, but they did tend to be smaller. The ones that were in France that were growing at places like L'Angerie at Versailles, but use whatever you got. So first go ahead and cut all of your fruit. I'm thinking it's about time to sharpen my knives. That's what I'm doing tomorrow, clearly. Then we'll add all of the sugar to the water. He says to do this before adding the juice. Uh, so, so that's what we'll do. I doubt it'll matter, but that's what we'll do. Give it a nice stir. And then we will add all of the juice from our lemons. Now wait, let me address something. <laughs> This is, okay, we all have that thing that like, we, we just can't learn no matter how many times. Well, okay, maybe, maybe we don't all have this. I have this, some things I just, I have to learn multiple times. Whenever I take a lemon or orange or lime and put it into one of these, I do that. That is incorrect. I know that is incorrect and yet that's still how I do it. It's supposed to go upside down, but it just, it just seems so unnatural to me. And uh, when I did the guacamole recipe a few weeks ago, I had many, many people say, what are you doing? But you know, that's what it was. So let's squeeze all of these in. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Gives you a workout. Okay, now we are going to zest two of these pre-squeezed, uh, rinds, one orange and one lemon, and that's going to be a pain. I don't know why he's having me do it this way. <sighs> My hand is just covered in orange juice now. Do it beforehand. Nobody's going to know. You're less likely to get zest of you. But we'll add the zest of that orange in there, and then we'll zest the lemon too. And let's stir all of that into here. Looks more like orange juice at this point than, than lemonade, or orangeade, I guess. And then we're going to mix it more by pouring it back and forth. And then finally, we strain this through a white napkin. Wish me luck and that I don't make a complete mess. It's working. All right, it's taking a while to strain, so perfect time for some history. 
Now, the earliest evidence that we have for something like lemonade comes from Egypt around the year 1000 when they made a lemon drink that was sweetened with dates. What's interesting is that they even had something called sukar walemun musafirin, or sugar with lemon for travelers. And basically, it's the first powdered lemonade. And in the 14th century cookbook, Kant's Afawaid, which is the text that we used a few weeks ago to make our hummus, there is a recipe for it, which has you spread out crushed sugar and then drip lemon juice on top until it can't absorb anymore. And then you form it into a little cone and then it's dried. To use the sugar, pour some water in a vessel and dissolve in it as much of this sugar as you need. For each pint of water, use two ounces of this sugar. It's kind of like Country Time Lemonade, long before Country Time Lemonade, which I don't really think tastes like lemonade, but I used to love that stuff as a kid. Lemonade in its current form likely started in France around the time that our recipe comes from. The drink became incredibly popular in Paris, and in 1676, those selling it on the street formed the Compagnie de Limonadière, which was the union of lemonade sellers. And it's thought that these roving lemonade sellers may have contributed to staving off an outbreak of plague in the late 1600s in Paris. See, while most of the country was ravaged by the disease, Paris seemed fairly immune, and some historians believe that it was because of all of the lemon peels that were on the streets at the time of Paris. They would have contained the compounds limonene and linalool, which are known to kill flea larvae, and are actually still used today in many pet shampoos. Now, we don't know that that's the reason that the plague, you know, didn't ravage the area at the time, but couldn't have hurt. And it seems that lemonade wasn't just a way to get rid of fleas, but also a way to cure all sorts of ailments. In many cookbooks of the time, recipes that were designed for the convalescent or the sick included lemonade. And an 1887 article from the New York Sun relates a story of a lady whose husband had a severe cold recommended flaxseed lemonade. Huh, he said irascibly, a man can't have a cold without everybody suggesting some food remedy. I'll send for a doctor. So the doctor came, charged the sick man $2 for his visit, and advised flaxseed lemonade. The drink became wildly popular in the U.S. at the time, partly due to the Women's Christian Temperance Union, whose slogan said, Goodbye to liquor, here's to lemonade. And Lucy Hayes, wife of the 19th president Rutherford B. Hayes, was dubbed Lemonade Lucy by later generations for her devotion to the temperance movement. Hayes even banned alcohol at all White House functions during his time in office, though probably rather than due to a love of lemonade, it was to court the temperance movement at the time. And though lemonade often found its way into cocktail books at the time, more as a temperance drink, it also found its way into the more traditional cocktail recipes, though often the lemon juice was completely sidelined in favor of sherry. Another interesting form of lemonade was the egg lemonade, which took egg whites and foamed them up and added them to lemonade to create kind of a fizzy drink. Perhaps it was America's answer to the fizzy lemonade that had been popular in England all the way back to the late 1700s. Ever since Johann Schwepp of Schwepp's fame took Joseph Priestley's method for making carbonated water and bottled it for mass consumption. One of the most famous fizzy lemonades in England is called R. White's, and they started in 1845, and they have one of the best lemonade commercials of all time. It's called The Secret Lemonade Drinker, and it features a man coming downstairs in the middle of the night sneaking some lemonade. And it features a song by Elvis Costello's father, where Elvis Costello, a rather young Elvis Costello, sings uh, in the background, and it's very, very catchy. I'm a now, we can't discuss the history of lemonade without pondering the question, what is pink lemonade? Well, it's just that. It's lemonade dyed pink. No additional flavors. Though, its origin story has, has two possibilities, neither of which is likely true, both involving circus performers. One comes from a 1912 obituary of a circus performer named Henry Alcott, who says that he had dropped some cinnamon candies into lemonade at one point, turning it pink. And that's how it started. I prefer the second story, even though it's kind of gross. Related by the lion tamer George Conklin, he claimed that in 1857, his brother Pete worked at a circus selling lemonade and would cry, here's your ice cold lemonade made in the shade. Well, one day he ran out of lemonade and he couldn't find a well for water to make more. He rushed all around the show for water, but he could find none. As a last resort, he went into the dressing tent. Fanny Jameson, one of the bareback riders, had just finished wringing out a pair of pink tights. The color had run and left the water a deep pink. 
Pete grabbed the tub of pink water and ran. It took only a minute to throw in some of the tartaric acid and the pieces of lemon, and then he began to call out, Come quickly, buy fine strawberry lemonade! That day, his sales doubled, and from then on, no first-class circus was without pink lemonade. Gross. And even though the story is entertaining, it makes me really glad that our lemonade is not pink. That said, it is kind of orange. The orange really, uh, really overdoes it, but let's give it a shot. Now, they wouldn't have probably used ice at the time. Iced drinks were de classe. Um, I'll probably end up using ice if I like it, but to start off, we'll go room temperature. That's good. It's definitely tart, but it is also fairly sweet. I would have probably added even more sugar, but it, it is sweet enough for 99% of people out there, I promise. Um, it's really good. You get a little bit of the orange, but it's more of just kind of the sweetness of the orange that kind of cuts through the lemon. It's not super orangey. It is definitely lemonade, and it's mighty fine. So that's our lemonade from 17th century France. Not that hard to make, and frankly, I might start adding oranges whenever I make lemonade. So have some lemonade, follow me on Instagram, Tasting History with Max Miller, and I'll see you next time on Drinking History.